Hi everybody, uh, it's Robert Dunn from Art Top 10 and here I am today with uh, Sarah Jeffries and Alexander Hinks at the exhibition uh, Transcendence, which, you know, had a quick look around and it was really, really interesting. Uh, do, do you want to give me a little, you know, a run through of what was the idea behind it? Yeah, well, um, I was thinking of an idea that could cross boundaries in art, um, abstract representation, painting, sculpture, video art, drawing. So trying to like look at art, choose pieces that kind of uh, rebel against a kind of system, a format, okay. um, a format that everyone is given in, in you know, college. You yeah. Give them a format and then uh, if you can defy that and sort of subvert it, that is kind of, you know, I'm trying to think of subversion mostly. Subversion. Well, I love, I love it, subversion in art. <laughs> that's always good. And that, that was your... I would say, I suppose, all the people that we've got together, it's all varied, it's between sort of representation and attraction so much, and it's lovely to have so many different works together in one show. So, uh, no, it's cool. So, so, do you want to take us on a little sort of a mini whirlwind tour of the exhibition? Sure. Um, where should we start? So, we've got a very large piece by Alexander Hicks right here. Um, okay. Now, I, I saw his work online, and that's and his work made me want to sort of work with him because he's very much got this kind of system, and behind the system is the kind of the uncontrolled um, meanderings of this watery yeah, sort of thing. <laughs> so, you know, I'm really interested in how he's kind of, kind of acting upon, in a rebellious way, in his own end, and kind of like have, having these two sort of worlds colliding and, and rebelliously either holding back or pushing forward and, and with my work like, I wanted to sort of with all the other works I've been thinking about they always have they all have that kind of quality to them. Cool. There's yeah. a sort of um, to and fro and it's kind of like they've got this rebellious fight going yeah. on in all of them. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's quite so well, you know, I mean you've got uh, a lot of the works seem to almost be a metaphor for the whole exhibition in itself and uh, they are it, within itself, it's fighting between a sort of flowy, liquidy, out of control explosion, and then you've got a terribly organised sort of, um, <laughs> sort of um, trying to like, extend it's fighting with each other. And, and the size for me is like, really important when it's yeah. because it's immersive, once it becomes a certain size, you can kind of fall into almost. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, so, um, and, and I'm I'm trying to go bigger as well with my painting, so um, and and with the diptych painting that's next to Alex's just around here. Yeah. Um, this one's called um, Small Windows of Marginal Opportunity. Okay. Um, and it's like the black and white is, can be quite symbolic of light and dark, right and wrong. Okay. And it's very much it kind of looks a little bit cell-like as well. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, like a prison cell. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're trapped in this little corner. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and I wanted to kind of have a bit of a, you know, I wanted to represent, represent certain sort of things in our consciousness, like yeah. the, the cowbell, for me, is kind of quite a, a sort of symbol of like wanting to ring out to say something, here I come, here I am, whatever. Okay. And also with the folk um, reference, we've got quite a, quite a few folk references. And also um, the white flag and the kind of handkerchief, they yeah. kind of, for me, kind of conjure up kind of surrendering. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just, I've been reading about Claire Bishop with the, her participatory movement. Okay. That's happening, that's very now, isn't it? Okay. Um, and because I've been starting this proposal for my PhD, yeah. that's kind of, I'm thinking about individualism and I'm thinking about collectivism. And okay. With the sort of sweeping of, of the, um, the structure of the painting kind of goes away from you. The person is sort of interacting and being in the paintings, so therefore being part of the painting and being participatory. Oh so yeah. It's yeah, kind yeah. of like yeah, starting yeah. this, yeah. yeah. Well, you feel very much like what you in here, but don't you? And sort of be inside things. So there is, it is, it has got that sort of offers you into that sort of participation. Come on board us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It really takes you into that corner, yeah. doesn't it? So, I mean, the energy is sort of, this is pure energy, really. Okay. You know, the colour. And there's not much colour here and yeah. there's colour here. So I just want people to sort of maybe mind map it around and just kind of think why is there colour for him and there's no colour for them and you know, is there frustration you know, in society yeah. and the differences of community Yeah, no, it's, it's like it's almost like little stories you weave together, isn't it? Yeah. 
wander back and forth. And then, uh, I would really yeah. like um, Zoe showing those conditioning keys, okay. especially with the black constraint line. What's it made of? It's a. Uh, it's wood. Uh, it is wood. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely wood. So it's uh, lime wood with uh, self confusing tape. Check it out. Yeah. Sure. What is self confusing tape? Oh, funky. Yes. So she, she carved it? She has, yeah. Sort yeah. Of, um, so sort of this year she did a fellowship at the City and Guild and okay. sort of was working with their... Oh yeah, yeah, because I, I was at the City and Guild in London High School. I've got a brilliant yeah. carving yeah. place. There. And sort of Katie Kratz, uh, artist in residence there at the moment oh, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice so, one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like taught on, on a natural, you know, expanding uh, item in nature. So I quite... It's quite interesting how that, that can kind of have a dialogue with that sort of the negative side of, you know, society yeah. because it's yeah. a man-made tape. You know? Yeah, it's the man-made tape. And also you've got, you've got, this very, you've got these very much man-made oh, yeah. slices yeah. through it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Which sort of... Because they're, they're quite odd, those slices, because mm -hmm. they're not even like sort of dramatically through the centre. They're kind of like at the edge, almost like as a sort of afterthought of yeah. slicing. But as if quite... that's not enough, the constraint's not enough, let's, let's cut yeah. into it. Yeah, let's cut, let's cut into a little bit at the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of quite... I'm sure that's a chocolate piece of Strange, yeah. Restrained. Restrained, yeah, it is restrained, isn't it? Restrained and sort of... And strained. Yeah. Quite, like I'm quite obsessed by it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, come on, take us, take us around to the next... Uh, the so Alan Brooks, and sort okay. of, uh, throughout his career, he's always uh, pushed his mediums and sort of practices to the extreme and sort of uh, never makes things easy for himself. Sort of, uh, so what, how, how are they made? So this is acrylic on canvas. Oh, this is painted. It's painted. painted. It's painted. It's painted. Sort of, um, that is hardcore, sort of, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, he's uh, not surprising. You can only produce a few pieces a year. So Absolutely, so. I'm amazed you can produce a few a year. Yeah, <laughs> that is really. And I think these are the small They're ones not. too. So. They're not, it's not stuck on ever, is it? Uh, no, I don't think so. so. Yeah, I thought it was a collage. When, when it's like, like that, I can't I think, I think maybe he's cut into it. Uh, or you get, obviously, when you've masked something, you get a slight edge. Yeah, 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 you get that. It's yeah, you do, you do, you do, edge, don't you? Almost it's like a that. sticker effect, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just realised that there's, um, there's, there's, so structure kind of, instead of the red. Oh yeah, there is. At the top yeah. two, it's a refuge. So there's this kind of wanting to have some sort of, um, some sort of format or, or, or uh, regularity, like this sort of like mirror almost. There's like a mirror with this sort of shattering That's going on inside. Mm. That's the thing. Almost, you've almost got a square, you've got a square, yeah. square, yeah. square, mm -hmm. square. square. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's almost like concertinery itself mm -hmm. in around the explosion. Yeah, it does feel like explosion. Immersive end. Is, is there anything, does he start from any sort of particular does, do, do you know uh, if that's right? I'm not too sure, sort of. Um, yeah. Uh, it looks like it's something that sort of, yes, we'll know each stage leads to the next. Yeah, no. Uh, but so I think these are sort of C as sort of uh, one piece, and there's a sort of okay. series, there's um, further pieces which are larger, and that's sort of this okay. idea of having all exhibited together at some point. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. I've just noticed, can I, do you mind if I say? Yeah, please. Um, but I've just noticed some shadows, like there's a shadow here under this mark. Yeah, it's good, that shadow. Which is quite interesting, because you, you know, they're sort of, they're adhere, they're ad yeah, they're ad sort of adherence to that flat plane. They just almost, you know, the, to the point whereby you would think they were printed, and then there are these kind of conceits to that by having oh, right, the sort of shadow is really, really beautiful. And actually, mm, in nice here as well, the, you know, these sort of them. more sort of polygon type oh, shapes yeah. that are almost like sort of 3D elements within that sort of floated, constructed space. It's interesting. It is quite, yeah. Well, like, it's almost <laughs> creating sort of multi-dimensional <laughs> existence, isn't it? Yeah. That's really cool. Nice, right, take us, take us on to the next. Katie Pratt. Another sort of process painter, no, sort of process sort of painter. Of sets herself sort of, a, sort of a set of rules that she has to adhere to to complete the piece. And, uh, and sort of also sort of painstakingly goes through that process. Goes through that process. Does she adhere yes. to those rules, whatever happens? I think so. Sort of, yeah, so. Sort of, um, and so it's uh, quite an amazing result at the end, sort of, sort of, the, uh, sort of 
mixture of form and uh, sort oh, of like bright that. colours. And as you were saying, you, you, initially you think these could actually be... be some fabric work. Could be fabric work, but it's actually just painted yeah, on. Yeah, it's amazing. Sort Technically, of, uh, it's quite hard to do mm. that without messing it up. Um, no, so it's really... And that painting looks quite slow compared to the next Ottenville one. Yeah, this one's... The Ottenville one looks like it's really fast and sort of hectic and... It does, yeah. It's it's nice. I love how this is all weaved and sort of... Uh, weaved and yeah. sort of a lot more weaved. It does look more frenetic, but you imagine yeah. that it would have a similarly sort of, I don't know, prolonged process much like this. Yeah. Although it's not maybe as evident, because you're sort of... Robert, I noticed you talk about... You know, yeah. it's hard to do, literally, yeah. Just, yeah. as a technician, to yeah. do these kind of lines yeah, without lines. messing it up. There are sort of more breaks here, but actually, mm. the process does look very much like, very sympathetic. To, they look sympathetic to one another, don't they? Yeah, you know? yeah they do. I think, actually, the thing I actually quite like about it is quite like the edges. Mm. When you've got it's that like quite thick, escaped it's all right, sort of key paint. Paint. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's always, good. it's quite gout, and she, it's, it's just about missing the edge. Mm. So it's quite purposeful it where is. that's gone to. When it, you talk about process, like in relation to the mice inst and those marks on the edge, I think of Jason Martin. Oh yeah. Who would, you know, is sort of like one brush stroke quite often, just yeah. carrying, carrying one over. movement over. Mm. It's interesting. It's interesting. I, I think it, I just, I just, I think it's because that gives this kind of quite textural thing to something that's, yeah, seems more controlled, but in its production. Mm. And I'm really, really good. Next door. Yeah. And who's this? Graham <laughs> Crowley. Graham Crowley. Here we go. Great morning too. Yeah. And very nice. I mean, when I, I saw his work, and I thought actually this is really interesting. It, it's kind of defying. Uh, what we're looking at, it hasn't got a horizon, yeah. it's tipped upside down, yeah. and there's this kind of contemporary, kind of treated, treated contemporary approach to the, to the, to the boat. And I really, really was interested in how it was kind of crashing into the old, static, traditional English home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of modernity, this sort of like contemporary crashing into the established sort of, you know, way of doing things, I suppose. That's what came to mind. That's great. No, I think it's got, it's, it's, it's got a lot of subversion within it in mm -hmm. quite a subtle fashion. Because I love, I love looking at the reflection of the boat. Because it's, 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 it's a reflection in the water. You, you, you know it's reflection, but it also looks like a massive eye or something, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> and I mean, it's like, it's like, it's what you actually see, but it isn't what you see. Well, so that's there's no lines or defining shadows. Yeah. So results in a completely abstract shape. Sort of like yeah, yeah. And, and he obviously works in very much layers, but it's, sometimes it's one take, it's a one take sort of chance, really. And, and he, he um, particularly pointed out, I, I sort of thought, this is really different from the way that he's done this, yeah. and the way he's done this. And it's kind of like, he said that it was three motions. And so yeah. it could have been one motion, but he decided it to be three motions just to do one line. I thought that was quite interesting because the way he's you know, perfectly done these yeah. very carefully, you know, approached sort of shape and form, but it's kind of like not as carefully, but in a, you know, intentionally. That mirrors it's those conflicting systems then, doesn't yeah. it? You have this very sort of, you know, hard-edged, almost abstracted um, yeah. thing of, with the boat, which, like you say, doesn't look like a boat anymore. It's, yeah. it's something else yeah. literally colliding with some kind of, you know, more traditional handling of the paint. And, and, and you, know, you know a lot of it's glazed, and then he yeah. rubs the glaze off. So yeah. I love that. I love that, that it's the traditional of the glazing thing, but then there's some yeah. subversion coming in after that traditional method. Yeah. It's nice. It's so really it's nice. beautiful. Mm. Interesting, yeah. Really cool. And then we have uh, uh, Gary Colcross, and this great. is called Oh, two peaks. Two peaks. Cool. What? So what is, is this? It's oil painted. That is oil paint. What is it actually drawn? Or it's oil paint. No, it's painted with. Um, he uses a like almost like a model maker's fine brush. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, sort of conflicting elements. Yeah. In yeah. this case, the monochrome versus exactly. landscape <laughs> painting. Well, I mean, for me, it was like the grey was like the, the yellow boat. And, and, no, right. and this painting, this sort of uh, meandering yeah. sort of carefully painted landscape was like the, the upside down part of Graham's work. So. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, it's quite interesting. Yeah, you've got a nice, a nice thing that's almost the wrong way up or the right way up. Yeah. And that's quite cool. Yeah, and um, I like that he's not using the format like you know, the yeah. rectangle to paint. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so it becomes a sculpture, and you know, and then you think about the light that's that's happening next to his. Oh yeah, that's, 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 that's actually a really good point. I hadn't thought about that, but the the shadows are fantastic. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. then you like, yeah. You do see that. You do see the line of the of the material, and then you see the the line of the the shadow, which becomes for me it is definitely part of the work. I'm sure he. Sort of, because also you've got you've got the, the wood here and then you've got the lines on that other yeah I mean the, what the kind of it's all there isn't it the birch ply yeah, and the birch ply, mount, yeah. mounted on cherry I mean it's not yeah. it's not by accident no it's actually it's not by accident it's, it's designed <laughs> to give you a it's pristine isn't it it is it pristine. is pristine fascinating so the next yeah. one is, is a piece by myself and oh. um, and so. Because I was think I definitely was going to have this in the show, and I, when I saw Gary's work, I thought, "Well, I'm sort of having him in the show." And um, this one's called House of Healing, um, uh -huh. oil paint on um, two layers of hard plywood. <clears throat> and this is an installation piece that's in the Californian desert that you know you put in a hut in, yeah. on, on, online, and, and one of these will come up. Okay. It's like a hut in the middle of the desert. So you put height in, height in a desert and this is, you will get this to come up. And, and I had a little read about what this place is. And yeah. So it's an art installation and it seems as though people are a, a, a pilgrimage, pilgrim, making a pilgrimage to it, like a, as a kind of enlightenment, so a sort of so spiritual, the, contemporary spiritual enlightenment. So the weird hut does exist in the desert? Yes, yeah. And people go to it as a sort it's, of homage to the hut? It's got this sort of light um, installation happening so you inside. Can, inside it projecting from it from inside it like these the, there's yeah. windows that are doing that light and there's a window doing that light so i thought it's quite interesting maybe to approach it like the light is paying attention to these things and nothing else yeah because so it's kind of like chosen these these are the chosen ones <laughs> these are the chosen ones and these are not the chosen ones <laughs> the sun is going down, and yeah. that's the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, by the the end ones that haven't been chosen to go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. And I mean, with the, the stripes, it's um, you know, kind of interrupting that traditional landscape approach and, and making the whole board become an object. Um, and hopefully, you know, the black and white lines go behind, oh, behind the, the sort of bubble. That yeah, the house sits in space, or having the lines disappearing off behind. That kind of, yeah, it has that kind of illusion. It's actually quite odd to look at, because the longer you look at that, the more disorientated you feel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I was thinking of Mook as well um, when I did this okay. one. Oh, yeah, right. That kind of screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a good sense of screaming. Yeah, I like it. I really want to, I want to know what's happening inside that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We all want to know what's happening. Inside the hut. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have one example of Pink's work again. This is chasm, sort of, um, it sort of works very differently to Eclipse. Which sort of, with this here, you're peering into this distant space, which is framed by the structure, which then sort of the structure goes against sort of every other sort of element in the painting. Sort yeah. of, uh, for its uh, abrupt straight lines and sort of. Uh, uh, with the sort of straight lines sort of alluding to something unnatural, sort of, um, it's nothing in nature is ever straight. And then you have all these sort of organic curves, uh, sort of which are uh, sort of very natural in form. It's giving it's give me another slightly uh, disturbing um, uh, sense of dizziness. It's kind of how I'm feeling it's like I'm standing on this iron girder over this lava, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, it's got quite a, um, they're, they're, they're all quite, uh, Visually quite effective, and then they give you a bit of. I mean, if, if you wanted that sort of that sort of rebellion, disturbing feeling, that's yeah, quite. Well, so it's meant to allude to the sublime, so a bit of sort of. Yeah, yeah, but it's sublime. Yeah, yeah. I'm nice. thinking yeah. of um, John Martin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I sort of 
I can almost sort of see this painting sort of, yeah, developing into a landscape, like all of these sort of, the arbitrary sort of paint marks that you've made, however you've done those, mm. are sort of, I can't help but, my mind can't help but sort of trying to attach uh, content to that representational content. So I'm thinking of caves and I'm thinking of yeah. Yeah, like yeah. a whirlpool or a swirl or a vortex or something that yeah. is this sort of centre or off-centre. That's, that's you can't avoid that sort of, mm. sort of it's a natural reaction. Yeah, sort of. yeah. You probably don't want it, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit of like, it's Lord of the Rings <laughs> talking. <laughs> <laughs> so it's visceral, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So this painting it has a very similar effect as the next piece that we're going to talk about mm. with the structure and then in a kind of like a structure sandwich between two natural occurrences. It seems like the kind of the gravity has made the paint do it, do what it's doing. So the cage between the two natural occurrences is quite an interesting juxtaposition. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And like uh, Patrick um, Sullivan, he was talking about um, how like girders hold up hold up um, houses. Okay. And buildings, and, and so obviously they look much like still good as what, What's it actually made of? Is it wood? Is it wood? Yeah, it's all wood. It's all wood, so uh, and he's put it together himself. It's, it's quite yeah, difficult it's to get these sort of wood shapes. Yeah, so it's amazing, sort of the different form he's used. Yeah. So he says, sort of, when creating a piece, he likes to sort of focus on one decision, which then sort of defines sort of uh, either thinking about colour or form, and then sort of okay. the emotions that are attached to those colours. Sort of. Um, yeah. It's nice actually, if you look at it from here, you've got, you've got like a darker green where the shadows are. Mm. You've got so like different tonalities. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just hovering in space. It's not doing its usual sitting on top of structures to hold up structure. It's like hovering and it's, it's defying gravity right now. And you're, yeah. aware, and you're aware that it actually needs its own structure in order to do that. So there's yeah. a structure within the structure holding that structure to the wall. So like what yeah. could be like a girder is no longer a girder, you know, um, still structure. And, and it's now being subverted into a harmonious, almost, harmonious, harmonious. emotional, emotional <laughs> approach to architecture. <laughs> <laughs> emotional approach to architecture. <laughs> subverting, subverting the um, rigorous control of architecture. Is it, is it hard line? But it's yeah. not so hard line anymore because it's got the emotional attachment to colour. Yeah. So it's kind of softening that hard. Yeah. Line. You've, once you've broken that utilitarian, utilitarian purpose of of a girder of a structure, and then it does something else, and this, that's what it's doing. But mm. quite exactly how I would articulate that, I'm not sure. But it's mm. certainly interesting. Robert, you're talking about as yeah. you walk around it and you're seeing the shadows, and yeah, it's, that's, yeah. you know, as a structure, as an object, as a sculpture, yeah. something, you know, that a painting may or may not do. But certainly in this show, these things do occur. Yeah. Like with the Gary Colclough, for example, and yeah. you're seeing a shadow, and that is sort of part of the work. So it's quite interesting, it interesting. how sort of fugitive these, these lines become between sort of representational. Mm. You have the representational lines here of Alex's yeah. work versus the lines in the real as a construct. Oh, that's interesting. And Lots. linked onto that, just, just a little quick thing. That's what's happening with the black and white lines in the House of Healing. There's a, there's a, a grey line. So not everything's black and white. There is greyness in certain areas of, okay. of the piece. Yeah. So the, the, the black, you know, yeah. I think that that's... The grey line as shadow created yeah. by the actual... Yeah. I see, yeah. So it's black, white, yeah, yeah, yeah. white, and then... And then grey. Oh, you've got that there. I mean, yeah, it's really sort of lyrical, isn't it? Yeah. It's interesting how you, your work tends to sort of grab hold of that sort of lyricism when you're talking about the sort of the different lights coming off, the polemics, those diametrical opposites in yeah. your other work. It's yeah. really sort of... And behind you, there's, an, there's another Zoe Schoenhers um, piece. Temporal? Uh, temporal uh, transition, I think, sort of. Was it mahogany? Hmm. What's um, it around some wood and other than Maranti. Maranti. A Maranti. Is that mahogany? I don't know. It's amazing sort of the structural form of it, sort of how it's twisted, sort of. Yeah. And uh, then you have the contrasting curve of the aluminium. Yeah. Well, it's nice, isn't it? It's yeah. Not, I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's one straightforward, clear sort of comment, isn't it? Mm. There's not too much in it to think about. It actually works really nicely when you look at what's mm. around the room. And there's a lot of time. Yeah, 
Co hral s Lovami? Is that? I think I saw each time it's installed. It's all just ever so slow. I don't know if the wire is moving part of it. I really like the like the almost invisible wire. It's kind of a weird part of it. I suppose it can't help but be a part of it. It can't. It's actually just just. And if you see it, yes. If you see it, it becomes part of it. In a, in a got, photograph, though, it does sort of disappear, and then you do have yeah. these floating objects. Or yeah, have a close yeah. object. Do you know what? It's, you get, because you've got the light coming through the window, it's almost got like a sort of um, a sort of Archangel Gabriel sort of um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bolt coming out to Mary. So I was thinking more dove. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. A certain sort of bird. Yes. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. Looks like a bird of some sort. Mm. Yeah, yeah, let's go upstairs. So, so we're up here on the, um, the balcony level. Hopefully we'll make it through this section alive. Um, so yeah, give, give, us, give, us, give us the background team. This is Helena Bedlow. She's doing the TEPS, um, uh, TEPS course at the moment. Okay. Um, she's in her second year. Um, cool. I visited there last December. I came across her strange, banal kind of yeah. uh, sketches for sculptures, I think they are. But oh, right. The, but I think in themselves, they are really interesting Absolutely. pieces. You know, they seem like they don't have a function. Yeah. And that's so, again, it's kind of like that, an object that doesn't have a function. Dysfunctional objects. Oh, yeah, yeah. That kind of... Um, pointless objects. Pointless, uh, yeah. But, but nevertheless, they have a sort of subversion and rebellion to them. Yeah. I mean, there's one that's quite interesting. It's yeah. possibly not a um, um, an object, but... Maybe a floor. Yeah, it looks like a platform, caps. doesn't it? And yeah. The, the, it's kind of like what's underneath is kind of dripping upwards. It's like the sort of trees are either reflected in mirrors, or as you say, the trees below the sort of. I hadn't thought of mirrors, yeah. Yeah, that's what that is. So maybe, the they're, or... maybe these are the things fastening it to the trees up above. No, so it's yeah, like, it's oh, like yeah, a treehouse cool. platform. Yeah, like a sort of an upside down treehouse platform. Yeah, so they have that kind of like a character to them, some of them, but that's why I thought it was quite interesting that she put them, put some of these in to yeah. sort of um, mix it up a bit with not so, so much focus on an object, but then a focus on a situation and an environment. Oh, happening. yeah, so it, it, like, like, a, like an environment that couldn't possibly really exist. Yeah. Well, I've actually just noticed yeah. this, yeah, was, which is the platform. It has, it has a similar, <laughs> it does have a similar kind of platform in the trees, doesn't it? Yeah. Some of them remind me of Henry Moore. Kind of oh yeah, no, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And Richard Serra oh. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she, she makes, um, yeah. she makes, she's making the sculptures. I, I think I did see um, like a table, um, something like a table with funny legs that would never hold anything up. <laughs> yeah, um, so, so she's she's keeping her like. She's keeping her practice really fresh by doing different things. Okay. Not just doing painting, not just doing mm. sculpture. Yeah, no, it's nice doing that. Because she is actually a very good um, practitioner, a very, you know, a very good drawer. She's very, yeah, a very proficient okay, well, yeah, yeah. technician. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah, are, like there are elements that. of that, but you can see where she's sort of forcibly letting that go yeah. right. in other parts, <laughs> you know, which yeah, is... She's yeah. pushing herself. She's pushing edge, herself. Yeah. Yeah. pushing herself out of the comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. Which is admirable. This yeah, one's maybe video film this one because that's really cool. It's a cool one. Like that. And it's got a lot of little tiny lines coming over the top of it. Nice one. And then we have right. uh, uh, Villisa Chambers um, mm -hmm. paired with um, Ruth Solomon's. Okay. And, um, and they've actually been in a show before. Okay. I didn't know that until they both came to the preview and said, oh, we've been in a show before oh, really? together. So I thought, oh, obviously, because you know, it seems like it goes yeah. really quite nicely together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no wonder someone else has curated them together, so. Because that almost looks like what this one, it's almost yeah. like the painting of the inside of that. Yeah. And she makes insane. like these cardboard, <laughs> cardboard models and then paints from them. But I think the, um, so this is, is a representation of itself. Mm. And then oh, this is the abstract. Uh, uh, yeah, the abstract sort of world she's placed within. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it doesn't exist, so something exists, and then something else that doesn't exist sort of 
kind of like forcing those two together. It's really cool because you know, like if, if you make if you make cakes and you want to sell your cake on the internet, you can go out and you can buy like a poster that looks like a background of a sort of shop in Maine or something in America. And you can stick your cake in front of it, take a photo, and it looks and looks amazing. So this is like a sort of warped version of that. Mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, for what purpose? But what for exactly? In, exactly. Order to, in order to offer up, I don't know. Yeah, in order, yeah. Object a, versus, I don't know, colour field ab objects. abstraction, or yeah. I mean. But it's, it's, really... it's an interesting world that she's created because. Yeah. And yeah, and like Sarah says, paired with the Ruth Solomons is really quite interesting. Mm. It is interesting. Ruth's, Ruth's material that she paints on is, is kind of, she said it is an upcycling happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 so these are materials are dotted, dotted around a studio. So. Okay. There's a previous painting on this. And the previous painting is just the next one, but okay. these are, I mean... I'm not, she's attached them together. I think, I think yeah. she's painted Seeming. them after she's put it together, because these are, yeah. old, you know, cut-offs from doing mm. another piece, so... And then she's painted on top of it. But yeah, yeah, it's like it, it, it moves back and forth. Between. Yeah, this one's called... Um, well. Cool. Yes, well. And the next one. I just happen to really like the painting. I like the um I like it when you can still see the brush strokes. Mm. Yeah. But in nice. things that are still quite they're still quite flat and the colour's quite defined. But you've still got that I love seeing being able to see the brush. It just makes your eye move around a bit. It is and really nice. That one yeah. you're talking about is called Crunch. Crunch. Oh cool. Crunch. Nice. Louise's, another one of Louise's paintings. Cool. She, actually, the one that we were looking at, sorry, is called Lean, and this one's called Crunch. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and next to um, Ruth Solomon's Spyro, Clark, Spyro Cast. So the question is, when is she going to start painting that in her <laughs> yeah, house? Well, well uh, I spoke to both. Oh yeah. Artists. Are you asked them? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't ask them that, but they have. But they have collaborated. I have. So I, I don't know how that manifests, but that would be something yeah. that I'd like to see. Yeah, exactly. I wonder that, what background to be the... would, you know, because it's interesting, like, seeing the other one from Louise's, which is on, you know, these sort of reticulated lines and grids, and this one's on sort of more of a sort of a William Morris wallpaper yeah, exactly. design. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and it's not, you know, the wallpaper is, like, floating or something. Mm. It sort mm. of has a bit of a... Yeah. Um, it's been controlled, but it's sort of starting to, like... There's a reaction with the shadows. Come it's out. sort of on top of the shadows yeah, it's there, isn't something it? weird, isn't it? It's fighting yeah. around itself here. It sort of seems flat up here and then it yeah. kind of starts to break <clears throat> down at the bottom, doesn't it? This is the most it? recent one. That's really interesting, It's the last actually. one that she's done, yeah, she did this year. Sort of uh, figure ground. Yeah, she's, like the way she sort of applied that to the, to the background of the wallpaper is really, really interesting, actually. It looks like the um, model's going to fall over as well. Yeah, 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 you've got, yeah, sort of, this is an impossibility of things. So, Ruth's Spyro cat cast yeah. is a cut-out of one of her paint, an older painting. Oh, right. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see what, um, whether they, this existed in the old painting, this sort of beveling yeah. happening. Because yeah. it's kind of like another mark over the painting. Oh, um, I, think I, I imagine that, you know, she's painted it up, she's cut it out, maybe the bevel happened before, and then she's... Decided where to paint this new line. The bevel does flow with the piece. Mm. Mm. If that's oh, yeah. the case, we definitely would definitely have been inspired, or so the bevel would lead to the next. Yeah, right. so. yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, go on. sorry uh, just uh, yeah, I would say like about the sort of beveling. You, uh, that would sort of lead you to think that that's where, you know, they're the constructed parts that they were all separate parts and they've sort of somehow been pieced together. But actually, yeah. no, probably not. No. Yeah. That's yeah. weird because sometimes it's. Oh yeah, because like you, like you say, you wonder, is this the old painting down here? Mm. Where the bevelings followed and then this comes over the top of it. So I'm, I'm led to believe that maybe the bevelling was on this old painting mm. and she's cut it out and then kind of gone with the bevelling, sort of mapping almost, you know? Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's really interesting. And that's actually, that's canvas on top, isn't it? So you, you can is sort of, you can, yeah, you can sort well, of see the lip of the, the canvas oh, I hadn't here. That. So that's that really cool. is actually, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Quite a mixture yeah. of the yeah. Yeah, you sculpture, can really... painting, abstraction, yeah. Yeah. and then this kind of object coming out of a paint, you know, becoming the, the painting as an object, you know. Yeah, oh yeah, painting as an object, very nice. And that's what Louise is really interested 
with you know having yeah. this pair because she's painting painting an object yeah. and there's an object next to her painting. Yeah, <laughs> that's she, really cool. She really liked that. You know, it's kind of that juxtaposition, that dialogue. You know, it's very nice. It makes your brain go to different places as you move back and forth between what you have here. The final two pieces up here are by Abby Box. Okay. And this is All Others Must, Madame Bush. So I say, it sort of paints these natural scenes with uh, oil paint. And, okay. Um, sort of again, linking to sort of abstraction and representation. Absolutely. So sort of you can make out sort of the landscape within the piece, but it's also been pushed so far away from that. So it's, be total abstractions. There's also what's in the background. You've got like a. So she's, I think, so that is on the um, uh, sort of board, and so she, I think she's using the grain of the wood to uh, create sort of a pattern underneath. And but yeah, she's definitely done some rubbing. Of some There's something in the back, which is quite nice because you've got you've got a sort of double layer of. Yeah. So there's also yeah, it's opposed to the brush marks too. Sort of, uh, what's, what's it on again? It's on a so well on board. It's weird, it looks like a sort of piece of ceramic, doesn't it? Mm. I feel like it's got three layers to it. Yeah, exactly, yeah, 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 you do feel it's got a lot more layers when you get close to it. Mm. Or it's got five, because you've yeah. got the yeah. board again, and then you've still yeah. got this shadow, but they then it feels, it feels less up. important, perhaps, if it was exhibited out of the context of this show, but I think having seen the other works now, mm. certainly what I'm doing is looking at both of these things and going, how important is that? Is it still, is the fact that it's an object which it is still yeah. relevant to the sort of the territory of the image? Mm, interesting. Mm, and true. then we've got yeah, that, which is true. canvas, which is thicker. And what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, no, exactly. It's got a lot of different vibes, isn't it? Yeah. This has also got. Because it's got the, like, these yellow lines, you can just make out which come through it, which don't relate to the, the imagery. It's a very subtle sort of yellow line, you sort of wonder whether yeah. it's, you know, it's not supposed to be there, but it must be there, because you can yeah. see it, you know, it's kind of like a ghost of an image, a mark. Mm. Because it actually looks like it's on top yeah. of some of the picture here. Yeah. So... Here's really nicely handled paint, isn't it? Yeah, no, oh, it's very nice. Um, yeah, you got it. Uh, nice way you've got it. You got it. You can see all the movement. You got it left and right here. You got it more scribbly. You got the different textures, the darkness and the lightness and the translucency of it. Yeah. Intriguing. Cool. Down. Yeah. Cool. So tell us, tell us about the, the this video piece. This is a piece, video piece by Darren Nixon and Precious okay. Inns. Okay. And they're collaborating. Um, and this space that he's got, um, he's using, experimenting with, is a, is, a, is a temporary space. It's about to be used for a purpose. And at the moment, it's kind of in a limbo, non use sort of space. Okay. And um, it's interesting because he's, this space is like essentially a box. And so yeah. then he's got these other boxes that um, are doing something experimental. And what really caught my eye is that he's painting on the boxes, so it's kind of mm. sculpture and painting. And, and there are the, the insides of your body. You yeah, kind of it's isn't it? And then you've got pictures of outside, like possibly, a, I think I saw a tree and, and sky and, and house. buildings. You can see like a triangle on top of a heart. <laughs> and all yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of like, you're travelling through a kind of artificial landscape almost, you know, when you're looking at this possibly, because, you know, our bodies go around in a car looking at moving landscape, um, oh, yeah. because we're, we're travelling and, you know, and everything else is staying still, but this is moving around us, you know, or before, before us, you know, so. I think it's you know, quite, I think it's quite sort of poetic. In the in sorry, mm -hmm. in, and you've got the repetition because you see the different things come in, and they're coming again, and the left and the yeah. right, and exactly. you've got a, like a rhyme that's taking place, Basically. and then it will make the jumps up, react to each sort of. Uh, sort oh, of so position. the bottom bit. The bottom is actually then doing so, sort of, so he makes it yeah. out of move, and then she has to replicate it. Oh, maybe, yeah. oh, so she has to replicate. So it is, it is yeah. a kind of so that's weird. Is that sort of to and froing. What, which is then mirrored in the, mm. in the two things here. Why are they repeating each other's moves? It's no, 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 I'm just curious what, what it is. It seems what? like he's possibly trying to create some sort of regularity. 
you know, like when you look at the, the mm. finished piece, it's kind of there is a regularity, a kind of balance, there's some sort of equal balance going on. Yeah, I suppose it's like quite a simple way to sort of come up with a strategy, is yeah. to, and then it sort of fits into that sort of idea of collaboration. Yeah, I mean that looks like a castle, because that's what they're doing. You know, and you, I mean, yeah. So maybe he does want sort of a repetition, suddenly happening and then dismantling. You know, it's kind of like dismantling a sort of a temp, a very, very, very <laughs> temporary <laughs> soldier. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Well, this is it. This is, it. This is that's a very important word, isn't it? Because you've like temporary, temporal, like the use of video work, which is you know handles handles a temporal linearity in a different way to like a painting or sculpture does, doesn't it? Because it has like a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm. And yet, this is a a video work of painted sculptures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This There's all this sort of conflation space. of time and space. And I suppose, you know, you've got the, you know, the person's organ that, that is very temporal, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the buildings are possibly not so much temporary. Yeah, no, exactly. Right. So, yeah, questions of mortality. Established and not, and like, kind of, I feel like people try to get somewhere and it's, and their, their phases in their life are very temporary, yeah. aren't they? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're, we're always moving forward, aren't we, in our Absolutely. life? And if we're going backwards, we're staying on my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really love, I really, I, I really quite like because I like the fact that because um, you can focus on these little repetitions, it, even though it's like a video and there's all these crazy boxes, you can focus on the repetitions. Yeah. So there's like something really simple, visually, you can grip onto as like the story. And then when you watch them at the bottom, they're really worried about what they're going to do. <laughs> Standing <laughs> ages deciding. Effortless. Well, right? Exactly, because you look at the top and you think, oh yeah, a bunch of boxes are on there. And then you look at the bottom and you think, oh, they're really worried about where they're going to put that box. It's like, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because you're sort of, when you look at a painting, you're sort of tracing sort of marks in order to sort of lead you into potentially how the work was made. But here we've got the, a diagram of them going through those decisions. Yeah, those no, I love decisions. It. It's really yeah. beautiful, actually. Yeah, I mean, but when you watch it, it's sort of like he does want bricks suddenly to repeat again. He does want yeah. the the bile to repeat again and the sky to repeat and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, there is a kind of there's a logic there, isn't there? Yeah. Um, and he also he's um, he, he makes sculptures that people can participate in and. And sort of, it's like lo-fi, very lo-fi. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's lo-fi. very much kind of accessible, democratic. You know, so and that's what I was interested in. His work is democratic lo-fi. Okay. For me, you know, and, and even he says that as well. It's quite democratic. You know, he wants that de- democratic sort of stuff because art can be quite kind of can be quite. Well, he's fully he's fully so. disseminating the process here, isn't he? There's no there's nothing sort of left to well. Well, at this point now, having had us speak about it for a few minutes, <laughs> yeah. but but when you first come into it, you know, yeah. it's like when you you know confront a painting, you you sort of feel a little bit like isolated. And yeah. is there a, is there a point into it? And there are sort of lots of cues here. And I think us having sort of spoken them through, it sort of feels like he really is disseminating and sort of giving, being very generous with yeah, like that. That, with, yeah. That, with yeah. that with that process. It's really nice. And you can sit here and watch it for hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just be mesmerised by it. Yeah, it's hypnotic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Patrick uh, O'Sullivan and... Uh, Very cool. So, yeah, so... Going back to sort of his other piece, so he, he used to be a painter and sort of found it quite constricting, just having a canvas, and he also mm-hmm. always enjoyed making things, and so this is a way of merging sort of both of his passions together. So. It's interesting, isn't it? Because, look, like, he's... he's He's left this, because this is obviously part of it, the silver. Mm. He likes the nuts and bolts. He likes the nuts and bolts. Yeah. But he's covered this one up here. I just think, so he's painted that one white. So he must have decided mm. that that one didn't quite That's relate to the rest of the piece. In the way yeah. When I have spoken yeah. to him, or when I spoke to him and yeah. met him for the first time, and he was chatting about these, he almost sees them as maquettes. Oh, yeah. For painting? For... I suppose sculptures realised in other materials. Oh, so they'd be like giant so things they, out in the world. I don't know necessarily about the scale as much as, but he mm. he did speak about materials doing particular things like acrylic, okay. cast or extruded acrylic and aluminium and 
all these kinds of things. So this is, I suppose, mm. a, a reasonably workable material being as it is. Is it MDF or ply or something? Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, sort of more workable. So MDF. MDF. Yeah. We've got that cool blue and then that sort of really intense, yeah. kind mm. of almost orange, fluorescent red. Yeah. Blue. And then this fluorescent yellow. Yeah. And it's all kind of going into a point, and like there's a, there's like sort of almost like being held, and then there's this point happening, sort of like a funnel neck, a kind of a real crunching of a space almost, it seems, you know? Yeah, it does. So, so that feels like quite kind of like aggressive, and that feels quite calm, and it's kind of like maybe get to a point, you know? Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where is it leading us to? And also that, like, the yellow line does look almost like it re from certainly from the camera it reads as acrylic, like the side of an acrylic. Yeah, it does. Sheet. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, where that's, it's a nice, that's a nice illusion, isn't it? And you've got the light and the dark happening again, which which is recurring. Yeah. Yeah. You've got light and the dark and you've got this this bit of the yellow is slightly dark and yellow and this light again. And you've got this lovely white here at the bottom. Mm. Yeah. I quite but, like Louisa Chambers to paint it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Once again, you know, exactly. You're waiting for it to happen. You know, William Morris back now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we have um, Kira Bennett's just over here. This one's called Plain. P L E I N. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and I was, I was, cons I, I wanted to try and get a piece of hers in the show because it's in in conversation with Graham's work and sure. Gary's work and my work. Okay. Um, and has that, has that kind of. For me, it almost feels like there's something from history going on it because of the way she's painting it in a yeah, yeah. possibly a cubist sort of way. Or yeah, it's got, like yeah, it has got, it's got, it's definitely got, it's got allusions to stuff from like oh, retro, almost. <laughs> retro, yeah, yeah, yeah. retro. <laughs> but um, right. you know, there's that representation going on, an abstract, but the abstract is probably possibly less abstract than you know than some mm. of the other works, but. I mean, you know, there's sort of leaves going on and obviously a sun and stuff. But yeah, I mean, bridge. when people walk into the show, I wanted them to see her work and all, and then to see down the end of the gallery yeah. to see the sort of like the, the disappearing of the sun, you know, and yeah. there's a, the sun here and then it disappears yeah. beyond the landscape, you know, and possibly it could disappear in this landscape. In so, yeah. Moment, you know, so. yeah. And you, yeah, you just got a reflection of the sun. Mm. Yeah, it was water here, but I mean, just... And, you know, obviously the sun is the most important thing in all our mm. lives, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually read, when you said it was water, I read it as a sketch pad. Because oh, really? Yeah, because I'm reading these two shapes yeah. as hands. Oh, oh, I was holding them. that's cool, yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's all, like, there's something... Oh, it's a sketch pad with a pencil coming out Possibly. and drawing the sun. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yes. See, you know, that's, that's mm. what's quite interesting, how it could be a leaf and then it could be a hand. But I think that's sort of kind of what's interesting for me with abstract paintings or things that are sort of playing with that figuration and not quite figuration is that mm. that authorship of the artist is then or subjugated for the for the right. viewer or the beholder. The, 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 the beholder can create the, yeah. their real, react their own reality. Yeah. Because if, it, if it's called plan, it could be like on plein air. Exactly. Painting outside in the landscape, doing the picture. Do, do we know how she comes up with the imagery? Or is that a secret? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have seen working sketches of her um, her paintings online, and you, so you can kind of get an idea about the sort of working process. So things look sort of more skeletal to begin with, and then they sort of no, as, no. They, as they develop, they become more sort of realised like Fascinating. this. But I don't know where exactly mm. they're yeah. derived from. But it, it maybe she's the one. She's the one drawing. She's yeah, drawing exactly. herself drawing. You know yeah. this kind mm. of. Like we're the drawer and they're on our hands or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Who's and the architect? Yes. Fascinating. <laughs> then we have Martin's around the corner. Maybe um, Martin could like, talk. Yeah, I'm about happy to, to chat about it if you want to ask me some questions. So go on, tell us, tell us, Martin. Um, um, well, I suppose I, I I enjoy you using systems in my work in order to sort of limit decisions and I'm interested in these issues of authorship and facture, sort of the so-called masterful intervention of the, of the oh, artist's yeah. hand. Yeah, so those yeah, yeah. things are kind of subjugated and in this case all of the dots are actually block prints but using a, using a tool, a circular shaped tool 
uh, dipped in the paint to create those. Because they do have a very... I mean, because when I initially saw it, I couldn't quite work out how you painted them. Yeah. Because I, mean, I assumed you didn't just some use of a them, brush. Some of them are a bit more obviously printed than others. Mm. It depends on lots of things. It depends on the viscosity of the paint and the hue of the paint and yeah. all of these different things, as well as the application. Yeah. Um, but they exist, all of these dots, which are actually forming small squares. On, on the construct, and the construct is the thing that actually, I suppose, gave birth to that idea, if you like. That's, that's kind of what I'm interested in. So this comes from a, a Penrose tile sequence that yeah. I designed on the computer and stretched. Okay. Um, very much like Hans Holbein's uh, ambassador oh, yeah. painting yeah, yeah. with the anthropomorphic skull at the bottom. Yeah, I see. So that's, that's stretched. And then I've, I've cut out so that that would always be set in stone. That, yeah. that formula is evidenced in some way. Yeah. Um, because I knew that that was a starting point for these other things to sort of to take place. And, I did, and, I, and at that stage, as, as I, and with most of my paintings, I never quite know what, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So it's sort of, yeah, following a lead, following a line, um, following a system, and then it essentially gives birth to something that I would otherwise not have thought of. No, that's really... So, so you've actually, you have cut these out? You? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's jigsawed out jigsawed. from a piece of plywood. A piece of plywood, yeah. Um, and, I mean, if you were to sort of look at it more, you can kind of see it's very rough and there are elements of the, the wood that you can see, the other layers, this yeah, sort of nice. palimpsest of other things happening. Yeah, because you, can, you can see the layer, there's, there's sort of the paint in the background, then yeah, there's the... exactly, and you can sort of see the sort of, I don't know, these are the sort of, this, this would be an, an edge of a small tile, a small yeah. um, rhomboid of some sort, which, and then over on this edge, which is the blown up edge, yeah. these, they become slightly larger, and you can see the oh, brush strokes see. underneath them. Yeah, so... Oh, so you sort of see it exploding or something? Well, it's, that's literally just the stretch. So if you sort yeah. of, if you... Yeah, if you were to point a projection on its side, the, the objects that are close to you would be smaller than the objects yeah, yeah, yeah. going away. So that's what this kind of... That's so amazing movement in the piece. Which yeah. Is, so, so, that's, so, so you've stretched it, but then when you've, you've come back to print it, you've printed it with all the same size circles, haven't you? So the, so the stretching has been taken away. The stretching again. has been taken away, and the only thing that could possibly lead you to that, although it's, it may not, and that's fine, hmm. is the, the fact that I cut out that first stage. Yeah. So that was always supposed to be a sort of nod to the first element of the process, because yeah. of course this structure could, uh, could occur on a, on a rectangular yeah. plane quite yeah. happily, and, and they do quite often. Um, but so this, is, you know, this is the first thing that I've sort of cut out in that way, okay. although I do use other materials to, to sort of form paintings, oh, it's really such as acrylic and things. So yeah. I sort of route out acrylic sheets and okay. laminate those and drill holes in the intersection and inject paint inside them. Oh, nice. So there are sort of these different strategies, I suppose, yeah. for sort yeah. of setting up something that... something new, something yeah. other that I... Yeah, that something, I yeah, yeah. Haven't, ...that I conversely yeah. haven't planned. So yeah. for all of its planning, for all of the systems that are in place, I'm interested in those things that, that aren't those things. So you're almost using <laughs> incredibly, incredibly ordered systems to try and cause something Some quite sort of chaos. surprising. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really cool. I like that. That's quite a nice sort of strange... It is, it's, theory, it's, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's quite interesting that yeah. I'm sort of asking these questions and yet actually the things that happen that are interesting about it are actually idiosyncratic, which yeah. are the very things that I'm trying to push away yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the bell against. Yeah. I, I suppose what it gives you, it gives you an honesty in your result, doesn't it? Well, it, it, gives, it gives a sort of... Uh, I, could, I could follow through the same steps again. Yeah. And that would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? That would be quite I wonder cool. what I, I would get from mm. the same process. I no, I'd be, I'd be quite interesting. interesting how the, the, um, the wall is kind of slightly, it could be behind the wall, and like there's a smack and you know, a big hole in the wall. Oh, I see. So it's kind mm. of like interacting with the wall in would a very be. different way, like the, the, the square does. It doesn't really interact with the wall, does it? I don't know. I, well, well, I don't. This is the thing, because I think having spoken as we've walked around, 
even then looking at the Abbey Box paintings up there, I'm my because my brain's in that yeah. in that manner, I'm starting mm. to think about yeah that, about it being a square and that that territory of the image being stripped away, and now I'm thinking about these yeah no absolutely or, you know yeah. all of the other parts yeah. that occur you know actually. In so these, these paintings, <laughs> this kind of approach makes you think about everything quite differently, I think, you know, when you walk around, you sort of, you know, you realise how many squares are, and, and rectangles are around you when you yeah. see a painting like this, you know, how, like, we're very much upright, we're like, these long rectangles, aren't we, humans, generally. So when you see something like this, it's kind of like, I think it's awaking some sort of I think it's sh- to the, to the yeah. square. I think it can sort, of, mm. can sort of shape you. It's a bit, it's a bit disruptive, isn't it? And I suppose that's sort of, you know, part of the idea, or at least a lot of them sort of these ideas came from uh, like process painters, you know, and sort of the idea of, of process painting being the sort of the material construct of a work. How it's made is a way into. The work, so your attempt to sort of decode the material construct of a particular piece is a sort of yeah a way to then I don't know potentially reflect on yourself even yeah, in, in your yeah. your relationship to it. Mm-hmm. So do you guys just just want to sort of sum the sum the show? Should we bring you back around? Mm-hmm. Anything? Yeah, yeah, give us a give us a. Um, so, how did, so, so once it was all put together, did you feel you'd, you'd got your... Uh, so it was, it was, uh, with sort of the creating, so we'd all sort of select our artists and got all the images and, and spent sort of lots of time talking, discussing what could have happened, but uh, we found that then sort of certain things reacted and sort of uh, the, the plan to a certain extent changed an awful lot from what we were originally thinking a couple of days before the install. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, so we sort of Skyped and started to piece all together yeah. and, and surprisingly there was a formula to the whole thing, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. So, um, with all the people that Alex knows, and then also some of the people's work that he's come across, and same with me, it's kind of like they all have a similar sort of um, rebellion, subversion, kind of tipping upside down, twisting reality, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that, I'm really interested in the sort of blurring of the boundaries, creating a uh, curated show that is not just painting or sculpture yeah, you know, and it's thinking about the space it's thinking about the society and culture we live in and yeah. trying to tip it upside down really. no well that sounds well it's absolutely brilliant really enjoyed it thank you very much thank really enjoyed chatting to you guys and, and, and I, so. the show finishes this sunday um the 18th of february yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but now everybody can see it hopefully on yeah. top <laughs> okay thanks so much guys it was thank really you. great to talk to you Bomb buckler.